God, that he has to be miraculously offset somehow, or made willing, or even filled with the Holy Spirit, a lot of you think, before there's any possibility. No, that's not the case, because man is born into a state of a moral conscience, like John 1, 9 says, the light that was in every man born into the world. That was the true light, the true light of conscience born into every man, like the conscience that convicted or ex accused or excused the Gentiles in Romans 2, 14. By nature, they did the things contained in the law, their conscience either accusing or excusing them. So nature is not defective. Flesh has nothing dwelling in it that hinders man. It's the addiction to your indulgences and your passions and desires that you sold into sin. It's not going to be easy for a drunkard to come to a repentance. And it's probably going to take a while. See, that's the, that's the case here. I know you all want to go out there in the street and the drunkards and the drug addicts and the people who are addicted to all their sexual perversions and they're just going to say a little prayer and everything's going to be fine. Well, if that was true, if God miraculously then changes that person at that moment, then why doesn't anybody ever stop sinning? Why are these people remain in this wretched condition of sin, repent, sin, repent, state of ruin, if God is going to change them all of a sudden? No, unless their willingness changes. Anyone that is willing, let him take up his cross. Whosoever will. Look up that word in the scriptures. Willing means ability and the liberty to choose. When Jesus said, whosoever will, all through the scriptures, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. Whosoever will save his life in this world will lose it, but lose it for my life will save it. Whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself. These are all in Luke and Matthew and Mark. In other words, whosoever is willing to count the cost and to strive to enter through that narrow gate and make every effort possible is the one that's going to inherit eternal life. That's why nothing works under this knot of works. He did it all for you, the magic cover. That's why it doesn't work over here. And those of you outside the system should know that. So don't incorporate and mix inability of any sort, lacking of ability in man, with your message or you're back under the substitution gospel. You might as well go back to the church because they'll talk about holiness and doing the right thing and, and living right and being upright. As long as it's in the context that it has no bearing on the outcome of your salvation because that's a done deal. Why? Because it's not about do right in the church it's about done as we've said a hundred times before that's why so whatever they say about holiness and self-control and doing the right thing it's all based on the premise that it's all been done for you because he saved you in your sins to begin with so you see the foolishness in this you tell the person that they're accepted in their sins they come to the altar, they pray the little prayer and the pastor, and he cries a few tears and all that. But then you want to turn around on our side of, of, this, of this and tell the people that you you got to stop these things. I mean, they're empowered by the Holy Spirit now, of course, in your own thinking, right? They got saved in their sins. He gave them the Holy Spirit in their sins, even though the vessel still wasn't fit. That wasn't scrubbed clean, cast out of doors, and made clean for the Holy Spirit. No, he received it in his sins. Then you tell him he's got to stop sinning. Well, he doesn't get it because you told him he was accepted by God as he is. So what motivation and incentive and imperative is there for him to stop? Why would the drunk then all of a sudden say, Well, you mean I'm not going to inherit the kingdom if I'm a drunk? No, he's going to say, well, I can't help it, I'm a drunk. And God accepts me as I am. Well, he's got that from every mission in the world, every street mission, every uh, missionary out there on earth. Here, You're trying to tell him that he's not going to inherit the kingdom if he keeps doing these things, but still giving him an assurance that God's going to accept him as he is, and you just point him to the Father. Well, see, he's not going to return to the Father until he comes out of the pig pen.
to begin with. So see, if we deny original sin and moral depravity and limited ability, and we assert free will in man and place the responsibility wholly upon man's ability to choose between right and wrong, then it's impossible for us to say that a person gets saved in their sins because that would make God unfair. Because if man doesn't have to stop sinning to get saved, why would he have to stop sinning to stay saved? You see what I'm saying here? That's what the church preaches. You don't have to stop any sin, and even child molestation, as we've, we've shown you in the past, even, even that vile. Are we going to see on the same side of the coin, or are people I, I've noticed outside the system that I debate with even now that still can't see this? They still say, well, repentance is a gift, and uh, you're born defective in the flesh nature. No, repentance is not a gift. It's a command. You don't receive Jesus as your personal Savior. You repent and prove your repentance by your deeds, or you're never going to see life. See, one, one fellow that, that's come out of a lot of this, he told me today, just today, and it's based right on what I'm saying here, if the person doesn't have to stop sinning to get saved, why would he have to stop sinning to stay saved? So if we go out there and we tell these people that God accepts them as there is, we might as well just hand them another bottle of booze or another Playboy magazine or whatever. Or just tell them to go ahead and hook up the cable and get on, uh, you know, get on uh, Internet uh, pornography. That's what you're doing. Because if they don't have to come clean with God, then... They have, they have an impunity to keep on in their sins and use the excuse that they have no accountability because they can't help what they are. So it's not of works, it's magic cover, it's substitution. That's what all the preachers are preaching. And you've got to pull those things down in the minds of these people or they're never going to come out of their bondage. That's what you've got to do. You've got to convince them steadfastly with all determined effort put forth, even though they call us fanatics and obsessed with these things, that man has free will to do these things. And when they get set free from that, and then they'll say, one thing that set me free from all this, to realize that God was fair. He gives every man the same chance to obey or not obey. Just like he says, just like he says in Isaiah, if you are willing and obedient, if you have a willing and obedient heart or mind, you will eat of the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured by the sword. If you'll amend your ways, it will avert the judgment. If you come clean, if you wash your hands, you sinners. If you purify your heart, you double-minded. If you draw near to God, and he'll draw near to you. If you'll let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy and your mirth into gloom. Humble yourself in the sight of God. There's no nothing in human uh, ability to come clean with God that denotes pride or arrogance. Nothing in that. Repentance is a season of sorrow and brokenness. Godly sorrow worketh a repentance unto salvation not to be regretted. In 2 Corinthians 7.10. And then 11, verse 11 tells what it produces, a desire change and a, the fear of God and a clearing of wrongdoing and finally purity of heart. Unless that period of heart is produced in these people, then they're never going to come out of their sins. So you see what I'm saying? That's why the imperative of salvation is always amend your ways, cease to do evil, let the wicked forsake his ways. If you cover your sins, you will not prosper, but if you confess and forsake them, you'll find mercy. It's not just a confession. I confess that I'm a sinner, I'm a horrible guy, I'm receiving Jesus. No, there's got to be an imperative to come clean in this season of godly sorrow. And it's not going to be instantaneous in 99% of the cases because people are under so many levels of delusion. Remember, we're under levels and levels and layers of deception here, not just one. So to bring them out is going to require that season of brokenness, of that self-cleansing humility before they come clean with God and find that refreshing of the Spirit, like it says in that ver Acts 3.19 verse, where he says, repent and be converted, and then the times of refreshing will come from the, from the Lord. Well, the refreshing is the recovery of breath that comes when those past sins are under the blood, purged, 
in your cleanse, the re washing and renewing and re regeneration of the Holy Spirit has taken